Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our electrification webinar. Before we start with the presentations in the webinar, I'd like to share with you some terms and conditions. So we are recording the webinar today, and um, if you're not okay with it, I think the only viable option is that you better leave the webinar, unfortunately. Sorry for, for the inconveniences. Besides that, um, I'd like to highlight that we've got a chat function. So if you've got any questions you'd like to pose, um, please type them into the chat function. Uh, we collect them. And after the whole presentations, we'd like to kick off a Q&A session. And we'll use all these questions. And hopefully, we can provide you with, with the answers you'd, you'd like to, to discuss. And also, if you've got any further questions, please do not hesitate to type them into the chat. Also, if you can feel any audio issues or we are not really good to understand here, please do not hesitate to contact us via the, the chat function. So welcome to the kickoff session of our Electrification Beyond Measures webinar series. Uh, today, I'd like to give you with my colleagues here the teaser um, session for our various webinars coming in summer which cover Horeba's fields of electrification testing. My name is Axel Waldhelm, and I joined Horeba one and a half years ago as business manager for electrification applications. Today in the webinar, I've got uh, four co-moderators with me on board. Um, first of all, we've got Dr. Florian Formanek here in the team. He's head of applications at Horeba Scientific. Beside him, we've got Alexander Petz on board. He's sales engineer from Horiba Fuelcon. And in addition to him, we've got uh, Torsten Botch also here with us today. He's the global application manager powertrain at Horiba Europe. And last but not least, we've got Dirk Kaffenberger with us today. He's a product manager for chassis dyno applications also at Horiba Europe. Here, you know, at Horeba, everything begins with measurement. So we can say um, measurement is actually the, the core DNA of Horeba. And uh, in the past, everything began with the uh, development of sensors, uh, at our, our mother company in, in Japan. And the majority of you know uh, Horeba perhaps as being the number one at emission analysis for vehicle certification and testing. But um, it, the electrification testing experience is actually equal to the experience we've got with emission testing and analysis. And um, everything around measurement uh, draws kind of a red line through all our segments in the company. And uh, we've got five of these segments. The biggest one is the automotive segment, which covers um, applications around emission measurement systems, but also um, the, the mechatronics products we've got in the portfolio, such as chassis dynos, powertrains, e-motor and engine test stands, and everything um, covering test automation systems coming with these test stands. Besides that, from the automotive sector, we cater for engineering consultancy and testing services. The automotive segment is our biggest segment. And beside this one, we've got four more exotic other segments like a semiconductor segment, which covers products like mass flow controllers and in situ analysis. In the process and environment sector, we cover everything around analysis of ambient air, uh, water qualities, gases, and things like that. So when you're driving in the cities on the roads and in some crossroads, you see these ambient air monitoring systems uh, in Germany, we can say about 50% are coming from Horeba. Beside these segments, we've got also a medical segment, which covers topics like blood analysis and things like that. And uh, last but not least, we've got the scientific segment uh, with more than 500 types of analytical instruments. Some of them get presented today uh, by Dr. Florian um, when he touches the topic around um, characterization of materials and things like that during this webinar. 
To put Horiba in some numbers, so uh, we are about 8,300 dedicated employees spread across across the whole world in, in 50 companies and working in 85 sales offices and 92 service stations. Our products and applications get developed in 32 R&D centers and manufactured in about 42 factories and uh, 34 engineering bases. So we are a pure global company with a big network where we use and um, when um, when you think about electrification and testing in this field, what does it mean for Hariba? First of all, to help our customers to develop technologies to further reduce emission, simple as that. But also to understand our customers' pain points during the development processes in the field of electrification. And actually these in, in all the sectors of mobility we can think of, like passenger cars, but also heavy duty and bus electric um, applications. We also see that upcoming trend in, in the rail railway sector with the new electrified trains with hydrogen applications and battery applications, for example, but also in maritime applications and, and the aerospace and aviation sectors. Besides that, um, we also see these trends of electrification testing in new upcoming hydrogen sector uh, as part of the alternative energy systems uh, with fuel cell and battery electric power supplies as key technologies for sustainable energy. If we go a bit further down uh, in this webinar, we'd like to focus more on the automotive applications around passenger cars and heavy duty applications. But at Horiba, our aim is not only to cover the classic parts of test environments, uh, which address mostly the parts of the development V-cycle. We are going one big step further to also provide expertise and solutions on material level of batteries and fuel cells. And I think this approach is, is unique um, on material level. Right now, um, Dr. Florian Formanek will lead through these applications and solutions. Then we hand the topics over to component level to uh, Alexander Petz. And then afterwards, we go one level higher to system level solutions um, um, explained by Torsten Botch. And we round the webinar up with a overview on full vehicle level with um, electrification solutions on the chassis dyno by Dirk Kaffenberger. But before we go to the answers and solutions, we at Horiba usually start with why and, and the how questions. So during the preparation of this webinar, we've pulled a lot of popular questions together and we hope we've posed the right questions today uh, that we can provide answers to you uh, on the different level of vehicle architecture. And we also hope that we can provide you with an even more details during the summer and the electrification webinars when we do more, a more deeper dive into the different topics beside this teaser today. So let's start with the material characterization at Horiba with Dr. Florian Formanek. Thank you, Axel. Uh, hello, my name is Florian Fomenek. I'm the head of applications for Horiba Scientific Division. And within the frame of uh, today's webinar on electrification, my talk will highlight how our instruments are commonly employed for the design, the development, and the manufacturing of fuel cells and batteries. And my goal is to provide you with a, a general overview of our scientific and analytical offer, addressing the needs for the characterization of advanced material, but also uh, subcomponents. So, Horiba Scientific is home to key technologies, many of them based on non-destructive optical techniques, which are found into instruments across all divisions of the Horiba Group. And this is, for example, the case for solution proposed by our automotive colleagues to measure in real time the composition of engine exhaust gas or brake dust emission through infrared or X-ray uh, fluorescent spectroscopy. We have a 
also a strong experience in pressure and flow measurement of gases and in particular characterization for a variety of applications. And you will find in our portfolio well-established uh, characterization techniques such as Raman spectroscopy, often combined with microscopy to provide confocal chemical mapping, but also fluorescence and X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy. Customers are already using our instruments at various stages in the development cycle, and multiple examples can be found in the, in the literature on sub-components uh, found in fuel cells and batteries as well. And we support R&D efforts committed to designing high-performing and cost-effective new materials, which will be integrated into those sub-components to improve key properties like current yield, durability, or pollutants control. Starting from an upstream perspective, many of our instruments apply for the qualification of raw materials to get insight on information such as elemental or molecular composition, purity, doping, crystalline form, particle size, and so on. At another level, we validate uh, processed materials, and in particular, fin films and smart coatings, to assess deposition homogeneity, layers thickness, surface roughness, hydrophobicity, conductivity, concentration depth profile contamination. Our instruments also help during post-mortem analysis to understand the origin of failure due to premature aging after real-life operation from a structural or compositional point of view. And to conclude on this slide, I can mention that we have experience in implementing online monitoring tools and the manufacturing environments and especially through fiber couple heads to control film composition and thickness among other parameters at the r d level for fuel cells we answer question on components material performance and degradation and for the membrane the electrodes or the catalyst we provide tools to confirm superficial and structural integrity so we can measure elemental composition, for example, with X-ray for some spectroscopy. We observe water formation and diffusion with Raman microscopy. We detect defects of foreign elements such as contaminant particles and much more. Here I want to emphasize on Raman spectroscopy, which is perfectly suited to assess chemical and electrochemical reaction happening within materials in situ in, or in, in operando at the microscopic level and non-destructively. I mentioned before smart coatings and surface treatment. So for example, to achieve anti-corrosion and high conductivity properties, this is critical for bipolar plates and interconnects, which can be analyzed using surface technique like atomic force microscopy, ellipsometry, and glow discharge optical emission spectroscopy. We're involved in research around advanced materials also used to store hydrogen, and it can be through chemical storage in materials uh, where we can inform on molecular composition during synthesis processes, but we also have capabilities to measure hydrogen content and desorption with our MGA elemental analyzer. Hydrogen storage can obviously be achieved through physical means in tanks, for which we provide physical and chemical characterization of the materials, and for example, alloys stoichiometric ratio or impurity levels. On the manufacturing side, ICP is employed to quantify traces of metals like platinum, chromium, or cobalt in water byproducts for regulatory purposes. But uh, the technique can also be used to detect early degradation of cells during operation. Now on batteries, again, Raman spectroscopy is a technique of choice, which can answer many questions on batteries electrochemistry, including crystallinity of materials comprising the cathode or anodes, and crystalline structural changes upon lithium ion insertion or removal. Particle size analyzers are often used as well for many problematics, and I can take the example of uh, binders, where controlling the size distribution of the particles, which are found in electrode slurry at different stages in the fabrication process, is important to ensure homogeneity and quality. And same, same can be said at the cathode level, to characterize borders of lithium cobalt oxide for positive electrodes. On the collecting foil side, two of our analyzers can provide elemental information on surface oxidation and corrosion at the aluminum or copper electrodes. So I will stop here with my presentation, uh, which I hope was informative for you. I gave you a far from exhaustive panorama of what we can provide in the field of uh, material characterization. So feel free to contact us to exchange on your and it's
Thank you. Thank you very much, Florian, for the broad overview on material level. We'll move on now to component testing level with the presentation of Alex. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello, uh, my name is Alexander Pitts. I'm technical sales engineer um, for battery and fuel cell um, test stations um, here at Hauger Fugon. And um, yeah, now I want to uh, introduce you um, Horibus solutions for component testing. So um, we have different um, yeah, types of, of test stations for battery and fuel cells. Um, for fuel cell technology, we have um, two um, types, basically. Um, the first one is the uh, proton exchange uh, membrane fuel cell. And uh, the second one is the solid oxide fuel cell. And for these types and um, yeah, technologies, we can um, provide solutions um, starting with the single cell testing up to um, testing um, stacks and um, yeah, later um, full systems of fuel cells. And um, yeah, we can, we can cover uh, the, the whole range, um, so to say, from the scratch to the final product. And um, the same is for, for the battery uh, technology. Um, therefore, we have mostly lithium ion batteries or cells, yeah, starting with the cell testing. Uh, or mo module testing and uh, later in the process, uh, in the product pro uh, development process, we have the full packs, which we can test. And um, yeah, we can cover a huge range of um, yeah, different uh, configurations and power levels of these um, test, uh, test stations. Um, we can divide these uh, test stations in three bigger groups or test station types. Um, the first one is for more R&D specific um, application. It's for yeah, basic material research or component um, development. And um, it's um, yeah, for the R&D segment and um, this can be used for um, uh, durability testing of uh, the um, products uh, in the yeah, later uh, uh, development phases of the product. Um, so um, before you start uh, the, the production, you can test the du durability and um, the performance uh, of, of these um, yeah, test items. Or you can make um, endurance testing um, to simulate an, an accelerated aging process to the product to ensure the quality of, of the product overall before start of production. And when we come to the um, production, this is the um, second type of test station, so to say. Um, these test stations are integrated in um, production lines um, there we have um, different configurations. Um, it is possible to make um, yeah, manual control test stations for prototype testing or fully automated um, test stations uh, integrated in the um, yeah, serial production line. And depending on the um, position inside of these production line, the test stations have different um, uh, yeah, tasks uh, and, and tasks. Um, for example, we have a test station placed in the beginner of line of the production. Um, so for um, quality assurance for incoming goods and uh, material uh, yeah, uh, testing and component testing. Um, or we have a uh, specific test station, uh, test station uh, in line uh, in, in the production line after specific um, production steps to uh, control your um, yeah, production process. Or at the end of the line, um, we um, test the uh, finished um, product um, uh, to, to performance and uh, safety. 
um, before we uh, go to uh, the, the shipping process. And in parallel, it's possible to place a test station with yeah, and an fully uh, uh, um, upgraded test station to make um, some audit tests and overall quality assurance um, in, in parallel to, uh, to the production. And the third uh, group or type of the test stations are an, an test station for um, the applications um, for the for the product, um, so to say. And here we have uh, different combinations of um, um, test station components combined together. Um, with, uh, and, and here we have um, an, yeah, uh, really application-driven solutions, uh, very customer-specific. Uh, like yeah, powertrain test stations, um, and here is a focus on um, development of um, future products. When we look now uh, deeper into the um, fuel cell um, technologies, we have different um, test stations for the um, types of technologies. Um, we have our um, evaluator uh, for PEM. Uh, low temperature fuel cell testing, and um, for the SOFC, we have our um, high temperature evaluator test stations, and we have, uh, as I said, um, different combinations uh, for single cell testing, component testing, um, stacks, uh, hot box tests, and system tests. Or we have uh, some customized um, test stations for balance of plant uh, testing of single components of your fuel cell system. And we are able to yeah, simulate uh, the, the uh, atmospheric pressure or um, make some tilt angles simulation um, on, on the uh, test item to make a more uh, realistic test scenario. And also important, we have uh, for fuel cells the electrolyzer um, testing function, so that we have um, yeah, PEM, PEM electrolyzer test station and alkaline uh, test stations, for example. And um, therefore, we have uh, yeah, precise uh, um, pressure independent water feedback, uh, feeding, and metering systems. And all of these uh, test stations have um, a yeah, safety uh, measuring system for unattended testing. For battery testing, we have our Evaluator B product. And these test, uh, test stations are designed for the um, automated testing for battery cells, uh, modules, and packs, mostly um, lithium ion uh, batteries. And these um, test stations have also an, an overall safety concept um, for um, safe handling of the um, yeah, test item and the test station and our fail safe PLC control. Uh, for, for the battery, we have um, an, an high voltage protection concept and a touch proof design uh, integrated in the test station. As a main component for uh, for these test stations, we have our um, uh, a customized uh, charging discharging units in different configurations and, and, and power levels. Uh, for example, um, we have um, multi-channel uh, configurations for uh, yeah, or with with the load management. And with these units, you can uh, realize. Um, charging, discharging cycles according to the international standards. Uh, included in this test station, mostly we have some uh, thermal and climate chambers uh, to make uh, some, some environmental simulation. And uh, these uh, chambers are uh, designed uh, um, yeah, according to the oil car hazard levels. And also for uh, communication to the test item. We have our uh, real-time CAN interface and different configurations of terminal control to get access to the battery management system. And all these components um, yeah, can be 
uh, or designed that they can be scaled up in um, yeah um, bigger test station configurations, so to say. Um, that's for for uh, system testing, um, which my colleague Thorsten um, now will introduce to you. Thank you very much, Alex, for the overview on component level. We'll move forward to the system level with Thorsten now. Thorsten, please. Thank you, Axel, for your kind uh, introduction and handover. My name is Thorsten Botsch, and I'm Global Application Manager Powertrain at Horeba Europe in Germany. And during the next block, I will give you a brief overview on Horeba's system testing portfolio. The Horeba definition of system testing includes all kind of powertrain testing from subsystem level, like e-motor testing, up to the complete powertrain or system level. And our flexible and modular test stands can cover conventional ICE powered and also hybrid drivetrains, um, as well as powertrains for BEVs and FCEVs. On the right side of the slide, you can see some example, examples um, for our main application areas. So we are mainly focused on um, test environments for light duty, heavy duty, non-road mobile machinery, and also some special applications. And here we brought as example, uh, military applications, sometimes with more than four wheel uh, driven vehicles. Um, this or our solutions can help uh, you to solve your development tasks. If we look now a little bit more detailed um, to the subsystem level on the next slide, um, we are focusing on high speed e-motor testing. Horiba has around 20 years of experience in high-speed e-motor testing, and we are continuously further developing our um, modular e-motor testing platform to fulfill the uh, existing, the present requirements, but also to look to the future. And this is much more, in uh, more important to focus on the upcoming trends. So the main trends that we saw the last years were the drastically increased um, maximum speeds, power and torque demands coming from the market. And um, just as a small teaser um, for the upcoming webinars, we are developing at the moment a high performance test bed for speeds up to 25,000 RPM in combination also with high power and high torque. Um, on the right side below, you can see as an example, our R&D setup for high-speed test bench development. So this is what we do in our R&D facility in our lead factory in Darmstadt. Um, all the components um, are designed, simulated, validated over the complete performance and driving range to avoid any issues on site during operation. If we move now one step ahead to the full system level. Um, we have even a much longer experience in this section on uh, yeah, driveline testing for light duty and heavy duty applications. We started this long time ago in the 1960s. And um, yeah, this is the base for all of our competence, but for sure we are also here further developing and all of our um, electrified powertrain solutions are based on our modular test bed design that you can see in the middle of the picture. And this is one example for a light duty um, e powertrain test bed that we can provide. This modular approach um, includes the complete mechanical setup, the electrical setup, the complete measuring uh, equipment with different options. Um, the data acquisition, the testbed automation, and also on top of everything, our own Horiba solution for lab management. So we can also provide here our own STARS enterprise um, that helps you to improve your processes. And this open and flexible approach that we have helps us to provide all the different configurations that you see here, starting on the left side with 
hybrid and e-excel applications for light duty. Um, but also on the right side uh, below, you see some heavy duty examples up to heavy duty test beds for full vehicle with complete uh, climatic and altitude simulation. Going now to the next sli slide, um, to a new topic. And the new topic is fuel cell powertrain. Um, and one of the statements on the, on the left side, you can see our approach is constant improvement and this drives us every day. And um, therefore we are continuously looking for new application fields and further development also of our um, existing testing solutions. And beginning of 2020, we started a new development program focused on fuel cell powertrain application development. And what you can see on the right side in the picture is our um, own Horiba test center in Japan that we use as main development platform for our fuel cell powertrain activities. The idea behind is to connect the competence that my colleague Alexander Peetz introduced to you on the battery and on the fuel cell level um, together with our knowledge that I just showed you on the powertrain and e-motor side. And for this, um, we created the fuel cell powertrain test in the loop, which is a methodology to connect real and virtual components um, for full system validation. And we are using mainly the fuel cell test bed you see on the left side of the picture, the battery um, test cells next to each other, and also the powertrain test cell here for light duty application to do um, uh, full powertrain in the loop testing for BEV and also for FCV applications in our own lab. If you want to know more about Horiba's fuel cell powertrain uh, in the uh, powertrain test in the loop approach, um, you can get in touch with us or we will have more dedicated uh, and detailed sessions on this topic within the next months. So now I will hand over to my colleague Dirk Kaffenberger. He will uh, step one step ahead to the complete vehicle level and will present you uh, his view on full vehicle testing. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for you overview, Torsten. So you did the introduction already. Thanks for that. So uh, let's directly go on with Dirk. Yeah, thank you very much, Torsten. Um, my name is Dirk Kaffenberger. I'm the global product manager for Chassis Dino at, <clears throat> at Horiba. So we are talking now, we want to close the loop at the end. Next slide. That means if you have a look in the VDA diagram, we are now by the whole vehicle acceptance testing for electrical vehicle. So if we have to, to test electrical vehicles in the next slide, an example, what we what we have to improve at our our standard chassis dynos meters. If you have if you have, for example, a Tesla S with 950 Newton meter, 500 kilowatt and the transmission is one to 10, you have at the tires 9,500 Newton meter. That means by a radian of the tires of 350 millimeter, 27,000 Newtons. And that comes from the beginning. Okay, by such powerful vehicles, you have normally every time all real drive vehicle. That means if you share it, okay, it's 13,500 Newton per axle. What we can offer in our Vulcan series from motorcycle to heavy duty here, I want to, to show the improvement of the our most um, successful Vulcan um, light duty dyno and MDV dyno um, in the in the Evo series. So we improved the, the nominal load from 350 kilowatt by the 4WD dyno with middle motor and 500 kilowatt per axle of the 4 to 4 dyno. The overload is 700 and 900 kilowatt in the 4 to 4 mode. Force is the same. We, in, in, we have now a higher power, a more powerful dyno with nominal load of 9,800 to 18,000 per, per axle, overload 19,500 Newton to 25,000 Newton. 
per axle. That was especially for very powerful um, electrical vehicles what we what we sold now for different customer. What was our solution for different customer? And what we what we are using by by four to four dynos is synchron motors, has some higher efficiency and is very similar to the technology in the vehicle. We have a torque motor that is a 24 pole machine. So the, the torque is much more smooth from the beginning than by an AC solution with six pole machine. Good, if you have, that means as a dyno we have, then the next step is you need an automation system. We have our STARS platform for that in the middle. You see that is for me the brain of the, of the total test bed with our Spark vehicle controller who controls the dyno with one kilohertz. The applications, what we can offer is, is okay. The emission we have in the past and the endurance altitude simulation is also what we have as a new product. What it's coming now more and more, what we see in the market is that battery testing, what the colleague showed you before. We have an interface to that system. Um, we have RDE on dyno. That means we, we measure all data on the road and we can simulate it on a, on a dyno. What is also very interesting Interesting in discussion is simultaneous driving. That means you can run this your vehicle on the road by, for example, an electric vehicle and can test different vehicles simultan on a chassis dyno. What is also coming more now with the electrification is the EMC dyno and NVH. We have different inquiries and we can offer your uh, real world simulation together with, for example, D-Space or, or the car maker functionality. On the left side, you see what you need also at the end. You need not only a maintenance system, that's a, it's a, it's a management system. I call it management system for the facility. And on top, we can offer STARS Enterprise as a test field management system. So now one, the next slide is a little bit more detailed. What I, what I explained was that with FuelCon, with a battery emulator, that is as a, the, the, the data of that emulation system where we have an interface. That means you have everything from one hand. It's a, the HV emulator and 48, 48, 48 volt emulator, what is what we can offer your, in your test field. Next slide is then more the applications. That means we have done a lot of different applications. One standard test for electrification, if you have four independent um, um, acceleration system of the, of the vehicle is a curb test. That it's not so simple if you have four independent um, uh, torque motors in your vehicle. So you can select here different different limits, and then we release the dyno and 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 run the dyno in road load simulation for the controlling of your vehicle. Is that that not so easy? Other example, you see acceleration at from 80 to 180 kilometer. That was a special test for for noise measurement by different tire types. That means an old tire on left side, a very new tire on right side. So I have different um, speeds at every tire and you see in the in the red and in the gray graph that there is a, a little bit deviation in the in the torque and then you can try to optimize it that in your vehicle software on the right side different applications is is the abs test that it's common by by um, EMC dynos, curve simulation, over the, the steering, we can calculate the different speeds of the different front, rear, and left and right side. Ice plate simulation, it's also possible. It's not similar. It's it's a little bit different to, to, a, to a powertrain dyno because if we have a limit, which maximum force we can over, over one tire, the acceleration of the tire is then a little bit different because we have to accelerate also the inertia of the of the roller. Standard test is also one to one, zero to one hundred kilometer. That is the reason why we need also a powerful dyno. Similar one one example also backwards with great in climatic conditions we cool down the dyno and there was different 
we, you can repeat an endurance test was that more backwards with grade to check that your vehicle is every time working well. NVH ramp test, that's a standard procedure for NVH testing um, by different throttle positions, very, very simple tests. Very interesting test was a resonance test. We measure the noise in the vehicle over a speed ramp by different uh, throttle positions. And the loudest point we go on and run one hour in that in that condition. And after one hour, we make an additional ramp test or a calibration test to, to recognize, okay, if we are in the same speed or it's a little bit different, then we run that test in that speed to see which, which part in the vehicle has a problem and makes the noise and getting louder over, over the endurance test. Last test is, I think it's also very interesting where you see the deviation be between combustion engine and, and, and electrification is a power measurement. The orange line, you see the electrical power on the front axle that comes very quick with, with constant uh, load. And the rear axle was here in that example and combustion engine, okay, and that takes time if they reach the maximum power. That was from, that was it from my side. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks. Thank you very much for the, uh, let's say, more techy deep dive here yeah. on the on the chassis dyno end. Yes, yes. Um, I think we we can see clearly a shift uh, of the requirements from emission testing uh, on a chassis dyno to the electrification topics, and um, uh, the complexity increases even more. But also the opportunities, um, what you can do with electrified vehicles to to increase efficiency. So. Um, Big thank you to my colleagues for the interesting presentations, uh, uh, giving you a brief overview over our application portfolio from material to full vehicle level testing. And uh, with that full range of solutions for electrified vehicle R&D production and testing, I think we're in a very good position to support you to make your engineering programs to a success story. Um, we hope we could give you a, a nice teaser for a fruitful Q&A session. We'd like to, to kick off right now. And um, at that stage already, please don't miss out our upcoming webinars coming in this summer. So for EV material and component testing solutions, we will have a webinar in place for July 2021. And uh, for EV systems and vehicle testing solutions, we're going to have the, the next webinar with more technical details uh, in September 2021. So let's start with the Q&A session. Um, I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Dennis Klenk. He's going to lead the session from the team Horiba Europe. Thank you. So hello everyone. First of all, thank you for the very interesting overview concerning electrification development and testing solutions here at Horiba. Um, we come now to the question, to the Q&A session, and we already have some questions in. So the first one is, what are the typical hazard levels for battery, for battery test station, end of line, and R&D? I think, Alexander, this one goes to you. Um, yes, um, there is a difference um, for um, R&D. We are in a yeah, um, earlier um, product um, status, so to say, and therefore we need yeah more safety equipment. So that we are basically um, or the most test stations are designed with uh, hazard level five, so to say. We have a range from zero to to seven. Uh, in, in these um, OICA hazard levels and we are more uh, in, in a higher hazard level configuration uh, with more um, safety equipment to yeah, um, uh, can handle some uh, yeah, cases uh, of, of an accident um, to the test uh, item so to say and um, when we look into the production process um, it's an yeah, uh, later um, uh, status or um, the, the product is more uh, yeah, uh, nearly finished, so to say, when we are in the um, serial production so that we can say 
we don't need so much um, safety equipment yes and um, therefore we only need some uh, equipment for uh, let me say hazard level two or three so um, this is um, yeah um, what we need for these uh, test stations so that we can design the test station more more cost efficient so to say Thank you very much. Another one for Florian. Do you have an application lab where to test your scientific instruments on our samples? Uh, sure, we do, and we have uh, actually more than more than one. So we can support you for for that in the main territories, like in the US, Japan, China, and uh, in, in India. In Europe, we have different labs, and, and the central one is, is where I'm located. is is just south of Paris, you know, on the on the Paris Saclay campus and uh, we, ha we have been welcoming customers through through all the pandemic actually since uh, <laughs> May last, last year and uh, so we do provide on-site demos you can come and we we run free sample analysis if you want to test the performance mm -hmm. of the system as well okay thank you very much the next one we got in is what is the main target for fuel cell powertrain test in the loop light duty or heavy duty application uh, Torsten I would give this one to you Yes, uh, for sure. I think the question is coming because we have shown our Bivaco lab with the light duty test beds. Um, uh, as everybody knows, the main trend for, for fuel cell is going to heavy duty applications for truck and bus uh, applications at the moment. And this is also what we see from our inquiries. Um, but nevertheless, um, it's, it's not an issue. We, we have a general approach for our fuel cell powertrain test the loop to combine different type of test beds. And it doesn't matter if it's a um, light duty e-motor or eager axle test bed, or you combine this with a heavy duty e-motor or e axle test bed, and also with one or two fuel cell systems to be tested together. Um, so we see the main trend going to heavy duty, um, but for sure we are open to everything yeah. thank you we have another one for florian it's do you have analyzers complying with european rohs and elev requirements okay okay so so here we are talking about the um, the directives on the um, restriction of hazardous substances and also the automotive uh, end of life uh, compliance so the the answer is yes um, with our X-ray fluorescence analyzer, like the, the MESA 50 that you can find on, on the website, which can quantify traces of, uh, of lead, mercury, and, and, and chromium, cadmium, and other chemicals. And the instrument is indeed uh, certified for those uh, regulations and, uh, and also for chlorine for halogen-free application as well. Okay, thank you very much. I think that pretty much answered it. Um, the next one in is what kind of contacting systems for connecting the test item to the test station are possible? Um, I think it goes to Alexander in this case. It seems to be following up questions for the one before. Yeah. Um, so basically for yeah, R&D segment, we mostly have a you know, manual contacting system. Uh, due to the reason that the uh, test, I, uh, test item is um, contacted to the test item for a longer time. And, um, but when we look into the um, yeah, end of line testing, um, then we have uh, different configurations um, for some prototype testing. Um, when we start with the um, designing the production process, we still have some manual contacting systems, but in the later phase, when the um, production process is more um, finalized, uh, we um, go to yeah, um, automated uh, systems, um, especially when we test module production lines, battery module um, production line in um, PEC end of line testing, we still have some manual contacting system. And um, yeah, uh, for these systems, we have uh, different executions, um, pneumatic systems or electrical systems. Or when we are looking into fuel cell, we have some uh, plates where the yeah, cooling circuit and the electrical contacting is uh, 
included in one plate so that we can yeah, handle this uh, with one uh, bigger contacting system. So mm -hmm. this is basically all of these um, solutions. Okay, thank you. Um, if you have any further questions, please use the chat. It's absolutely anonymous, so feel free. Um, oh, there's another one in. You mentioned the trends for the e-mortar testing. Can you please describe more detailed the trends you see coming? Oh, sorry, now I'm unmuted. Um, yes, very good question. Um, yeah, I think there are different different trends that we see on the market. One trend is to stay below 20,000 RPM. And uh, we see here some trends at the moment to, to increase the torque and the power uh, up to 1,000 uh, Newton meter, which is really tough um, for e-motor testing. Um, and on the other side, we still see this uh, increase in, um, in speed, especially. Um, 22, 23,000 RPM is what we see at the moment, what we believe, and this is what I told you before, that 25 and maybe more will come very, very soon, not only for um, yeah, uh, 48 volt applications, also for high voltage applications with uh, higher power and higher torque. And the other trend um, which is coming beside this is um, the change of the overload factors. Yeah? Um, uh, most of the specimen at the moment have much higher overload factors than we had in the past. And this is also influencing our um, e-motor test equipment. Okay, I thank you. Um, we got another one in. What is required to support FCEV testing on a chassis dynamometer? I would give this one to Dirk. Sorry. Yes, we have done an evaluation. What is necessary? That is only from the security. What we have to we have to look for because that is a special explosion uh, security room, and there are different um, yeah regulations. What you have to fulfill for your facility from the dyno, there there is no additional effort uh, necessary. But from the security, we have experience. We know what we what you have to do there. You can ask me. Good question. Thanks. OK. We have one more question here. Um, is it feasible to connect different types of test beds, like a fuel cell powertrain application, to utilize existing test cells for new testing approaches? Yes, I think this goes to me and to the uh, fuel cell powertrain test in the loop. Um, yes, uh, also good question for sure. Uh, the ideal case is every time to build up a new lab or new test stands and uh, to uh, run new applications like the fuel cell powertrain test in the loop um, on a white paper, I would say. But uh, for sure, it's also possible to upgrade an existing powertrain test bed. And we have several inquiries there to reuse some powertrain test beds or to add additional component test beds, like a fuel cell test bed to a, um, to a powertrain test bed and um, to upgrade so the uh, test capability of, um, of the customer. Uh, and this is maybe as last comment uh, fitting also to what I tried to describe before to our modular approach that we try to do this with open interfaces and um, that we have this future proof appro uh, approach to um, upgrade also afterwards. Okay, thank you very much. It seems to be this is it for today's questions. Um, if you have any question afterwards, please feel free to contact us. We're happy to, to answer them afterwards in an email or a call. Right. Thank you very much for leading through the Q&A session. Um, if we couldn't answer all your questions during this webinar session, so please do not hesitate to contact us uh, in person or at the address shown here. Uh, we will get in touch with you and um, also, if, if you like to learn more about um, these solutions and, and the capabilities of, of the solutions, uh, we can um, put 
meetings into the calendars and we are very keen on hitting the road again after the the COVID crisis here so thank you very much for joining the electrification webinar today i hope to see you in summer in in the following webinar sessions as well um, please stay safe and uh, see you in summer hopefully thank you very much bye bye thank you very much bye